The Vidos hit song unavailable, pervading the airstream has found its way and seeped into the church. An unnamed church during one of its services sang the song and been led by an undisclosed music minister, in which the congregants hysterically sang in unison and even accompanied it with the circular song's dance step. But Apostle Michael Loropo has this to say. Why are you asking me, say, is it a sin? No, it's not a sin. But your heart will become a courtyard of demonic festival. They will, they will play there for a long time. You don't know why you keep falling to masturbation. And when you wake up, you say, we are many. You are not many. You are the one who is fought. They fall from fornication. After two weeks, they fall again. After two weeks, they fall again. And then you ask it. They say, oh boy, no easy. It's easy. You are the only one it's hard to. Because the people stand, they are not standing because they are strong. They are standing because they are helped. And you don't know how to access the help of God. Modern singers and songwriters clearly need to take their task more seriously. Churches should not always do everything that can to cultivate excellent musicians who are thoroughly trained in handling the scriptures and able to discern sound doctrine. It is most important that pastors and elders need to begin to exercise in closer and more careful oversight of the church music ministry, consciously setting a high standard for the doctrinal and biblical content of what we sing. Apostle Edu Uchedu also said this. I don't know this authority that is backing me up to say some of those things. One time I was saying something and they went on a very big uh, social media blog and published it. They said I'm attacking. There is a young man that sings in Nigeria that is well known, that is called Naira Mali. Because I told them the truth that those things you are listening to and calling it song, they are not songs. Just like if they raise it here, a sister raises it here, we use it for worship. <laughs> Every song is for worship. The question is, who are you worshiping? Who can this song worship? So somebody said that nothing is in this song. There is something in that song. How can somebody be saying, yeah, 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 and everybody is following? Just like me, I can come and say, you deserve the glory and nobody will move and then maybe mommy will come and sing it and everywhere we stand it will mean that beyond the west that they are saying and all those things there is a a transference of spirit and when spirits begin to converge then there is an altar and when there is an altar there will be a worship so many people by those songs they are coming to worship every evening and every morning they are coming to worship sessions they don't know just because you are not seeing the spirit you are worshiping you are worshiping so when, they are, when you ask them, they say, is he a sin? Is he a sin? That's why your life is like this. Eh? You will pray. That will be come and raise you up. They will build you up. You go and leak. You are a leakage. When you begin to mature in God, you are not even more interested in what is coming in. Eh? Mature people care more about the back door than the front door. Because enough is coming through the front door. The problem with an average youth and a believer is that the back door is so open that Satan can drain the the impact of this conference in 12 hours of watching watching Telemundo, it will just drain like this. You will become normal. You will be saying, where is my fire? Where? But I did not sin. I did not do anything. But you watch Telemundo. You need to know what it is called. It is called Oikodomio. It is... Like it or not, today's songwriters or spiritual singers are teachers too. Many of the lyrics they are writing or singing will soon be far more deeply and permanently ingrained in the minds of Christians than anything they hear their pastors teach from the pulpit. How many singer, music minister or songwriter are skilled enough in theology and scripture to qualify for such a vital role in the catechesis of our people? The question is answered by the paucity of expression found in many of today's praise choruses. Another apostle said this. Any Christian you see a particular kind of dance is what is influencing, influencing, influencing. What he's doing is that he's paying oblation to that God. So that God has a stake in his life. Have you not read where the scriptures say, give no place to the devil? The devil does not take a place you don't give to him. Give no place, meaning give no land, no portion 
in your life to Satan. Because on that portion, that that circular music you have in your phone, I say no, this one is just listening to it to while away time. I saw, you know, on social media, a worldly musician released a song that began to trend. Meanwhile, meanwhile, one of the servants that was raised to influence the youth this year that was raised is a young man that has been trending Zoo, Zazu <laughs> yes, I see some Christians dance like him now oh yeah, my god do you know what it means to be an influencer you can't influence anybody if authority has not been given to you by the spirit that wants you to influence them do you know what it means to bring a dance and people begin to copy that dance? It is not because the dance is fine. A lot of you don't even know when you started dancing that dance because it is a spirit that is injected once you listen to a song. In bringing this video to a close, I would like to enumerate some questions pastors and their leaders should ask as regards the worship they use. Number one, is your church music God focused? Without question, true worship must be God centered, for He alone is worthy of our praise. Secondly, does your church music promote the ivy of God? It is not enough for church music to merely focus on God if the view of God is inadequate. Thirdly, is your church music orderly? The God whom we serve is a God of order. This is mostly seen in creation of the world where He brought forth form and function out of what remains. Fourthly, is the content of your church music biblically sound? While instrumental music is certainly appropriate during the worship service, most church music includes lyrical content. At the very least, these lyrics should be intelligible and biblically accurate. 